Well, what are barriers if they're not there to be broken? One minute, 30 seconds, dangle that in front of a driver like Max Verstappen in a car like the 2021 Red Bull Honda. And what's he gonna do? He's gonna do a 29.9, not a 29.8, not a 30.0, but a 29.9. The racer's lap, the racer's lap time, really, really good to watch. Uh, mentioned yesterday how turn 11 was, for me, the most interesting corner at Ricard, and I think that proved to be the case today as well. Max just superb through there. Uh, shortening the corner, and just to reiterate that point, Carlos Sainz, Sergio Perez, and a few others, absolutely beautiful through there, going with a wide entry, late apex. But Max going in early, shortening the corner, less road to be traveled, but all that beautiful massaging mid-corners. Another driver who's doing that particularly well. We'll get onto that in a minute. But it resulted in a 29.9 for Max Verstappen. A few radio messages to Lewis Hamilton at Mercedes about how quick the Red Bull was on the straight. And so it proved 328 kilometers an hour on his pole lap on that run down to the back chicane. Used to be a completely long straight with no chicane. They were the days. Anyway, it run to the chicane, 328 on his pole lap. But we shouldn't forget that on his quickest lap, and he ended up P3, Valtteri Bottas did 326 in the Mercedes. So there wasn't that much in it. Lewis, by contrast, 323. Is he running a little bit more downforce than Valtteri and obviously more than, than Max? Well, we'll see tomorrow in the race. Lewis, in the end, really, really getting in the groove today, driving beautifully in a car that he didn't feel, in which he didn't feel comfortable yesterday, but uh, found the sweet spot today and 30.2, very, very good lap. It was almost as if Max, though, was one run ahead of the Mercedes every time. 30.2 is what Max was doing before he did a 29.9. So Mercedes two and three, Valtteri right up there, as we said yesterday, looking a lot more confident with his car. P4, Sergio Perez, not particularly happy. He was quick on occasions, but made a mistake under pressure in Q3, ran a bit wide, and so the lap time wasn't there. But nonetheless, he's in a great position from Red Bull's point of view. And the other thing about Sergio's lap is you can forget any talk about Max running a lot less wing because Sergio was really quick in a straight line as well, 327 kilometers an hour on his quickest lap, his P4 lap. At the back end of practice yesterday, when they were running fuel in the car, Valtteri Bottas was quickest, but a day does make a huge difference. The Mercedes is a much better car now than it was, and indeed the Red Bull is as well. So it looks as if Red Bull have got the slight edge. The gap is much, much smaller, but really impressive how quick that car is now in a straight line, but nonetheless, how much grip and balance Max had in sectors two and three around Ricard, which are really demanding in terms of long corners and braking and turning into slow corners as well. It all adds up to what we've been talking about all year, the high rake angle of the Red Bull, the maturing Honda engine. It's really, really impressive now. What a great package that is. No surprise that Max said afterwards, and this is why he's driving so well, the car is just a pleasure to drive. And when you have racing drivers like Max Verstappen or Lewis saying how much they're enjoying their work, that is when you know they're absolutely driving at their best. So really, really impressive to see that. Ferrari were next up. They haven't been right on the pace all weekend. It's been a bit of a struggle for them, but Carlos Sainz has been driving beautifully. He's had the edge over Charles Leclerc all weekend, and he finished a 10th quicker. They line up 5th and 7th, split by the inevitable Pierre Gasly, doing a great job again in the Alfa Tori Honda, also showing a lot of great top speed. And then we had the two McLarens, Lando Norris, Daniel Ricciardo. They got Daniel up to pace, split, would you believe, by Fernando Alonso. He was the driver I was gonna mention that looked so good through turn 11. I mentioned him yesterday, but he did a really, really good job today to get right up there amongst the McLarens in the Alpine. Also running new Renault engines in the Alpine and both of them really quick in a straight line, Fernando and Esteban Ocon, that is. Alonso 325 on the straight through the track, which puts him right up there in McLaren Mercedes territory in terms of top speed. Long time since we've been able to say that about a Renault, just as it's been a long time since we heard a Mercedes engineer say to one of his drivers, the Honda's much quicker than us in a straight line. In other news, no change to those sausage curbs either today. Everybody's suddenly learning how to live with them. Race director Michael Massey reiterating the point that they were there in 2019. He's not about to go and change them. Although it should be noted that the sausage curbs at Monza that launched Alex Peroni in that horrendous shunt were modified overnight and were completely different and almost flat by race day. So it is possible to do overnight changes, but none are being made here at Ricard. What they did do is enforce emphatically turn six track limits today. That hurt both Lando Norris and Pierre Gasly in Q2, but both of them recovered really well under pressure to get a lap time in as they would. 
George Russell made it through to Q2 for Williams again, and so did Mick Schumacher, although it was kind of strange uh, because he was out there in the Haas Ferrari a few seconds to go at the end of Q3, and he went off, just made a mistake, damaged the car, which brought the red out just as Lance Stroll was two thirds of a way through a lap. He hadn't done a, a time on his first run in the Aston Martin, and, uh, and so Mick ended up going into Q2. So well done Mick for that. Good to see some fans back at the track today, Saturday at Ricard. Good to see some crosswinds coming in as one of the variables in qualifying. The weather looks good, although Lewis Hamilton mentioned that possibly it was going to rain on Sunday. I haven't seen that forecast. Nonetheless, we'll take his word for it. See you then.